name is Amelia Earhart. It makes people outside of situations like this look really confused. Every time I walk onto an airline and uh, one of the flight attendants is looking down the list, she says, oh, the pilot really wants to meet you. And I think, no, do not spread the word that Amelia Earhart is on this flight. It tends to be, make people very nervous, right? <laughs> I want to take you back to 2014, right ahead of the flight itself. I was asked to go all the way to Geneva, Switzerland to visit the European Business Aviation event, which is this international show that brings in thousands of aviation professionals and enthusiasts and manufacturers that are showing off the latest and greatest technology when it comes to planes and avionics and, and routes for travel. And it's just, it's a great event. Now this was in advance of the trip, so I was gonna go there and do a couple interviews and just talk about the upcoming flight in the Pilatus. So this big, beautiful airfield you see behind me is in the middle of the Swiss Alps, and right there in the middle is the PC-12. I was told to arrive at about 9.30, meet at the steps of the plane, we'll snap a few pictures, answer a few questions, and then we would go on with our day. So, crowd starts to gather here. You can see there's a few uh, folks with lanyards on. That's how you know you're at an aviation conference or any business conference. So, so these officials here from all over the world just kind of waiting, and then photographer says, Amelia, stand on the steps. So, a business conference. I'm a news anchor in Denver, so I'm dressed kind of like this. I've got my heels on. I'm not about to go fly the plane. But as the crowd starts to gather, people that are walking by start to think, oh, am I supposed to know who this is? Is this somebody important? Well, no. But he stopped anyways. And I hear a voice out of the crowd say, ma'am, I see you taking a picture next to this uh, pretty little airplane here. Would you like a pilot and your photo with you? And if you spent more than about 30 seconds with me, you know that this face <laughs> says this is going to be fun. So I looked over at his shiny gold chain and his pressed white shirt and his epaulets, and oh man, he was a captain, and he was letting everybody know. And I said, oh, sorry, what was that? I, I couldn't quite hear you. And he said, oh, yeah, I fly this plane. I show you around some of the bells and whistles. And I said, well, sir, there, there is a pilot in my photo already. And I kid you not, he leaned over and he looked inside the door of the airplane, <laughs> right? And that was one of those moments where I realized just how incredible it feels to exceed the expectation of what other people see from the outside. And we go on to do it anyways. Thank you. Now. The very next morning, the magazine came out. It's one of those trade show papers that everybody throws on the floor and just walks around on all day. And unfortunately, the font choice did not work out in my favor. We have UK disease is catching large. <laughs> and then way up top in the upper left corner, it says women's dreams fly with Amelia. And you know what? Even though it's a 12-point font, I'm OK with that because any time women's aviation stories and positive news can make it on the front page of anything, we will take it. Right now, thank you. Right now, only about 4% of pilots are women. And for a little girl who grew up with the name Amelia Earhart, there weren't a lot of role models to look up to. Luckily, we're getting more and more, but I had one main role model. Of course, her name was Amelia Mary Earhart. Well, my dad, and my mom are having to talk about, what are we going to name our baby girl? My mom says, this is not even a question. We're naming her Amelia Earhart. And my dad says, that is a terrible idea. He says, number one, what if our daughter feels like she has to learn to fly? Check. Number two, what if our daughter feels like she has to spend her whole life talking about somebody else's legacy who she act will never actually meet? Check. Okay. And number three, what if our daughter feels like someday she has to fly around the world? Check. My dad is a very, very smart man. My mom, though, also a very smart woman, said, Glenn, what if our daughter, anytime she faces a challenge or has a big goal she wants to embark upon, has somebody to look back in history toward and use her as an example for what she's able to accomplish? Number two, what if our daughter is inspired by one of the most famous women in history to go out and do great things? And number three, selfishly, she said, what if our daughter walks into a room and everybody that she meets remembers exactly who she is? So through the years, I started to think more and more, OK? Well, everyone seems to think I should be a pilot. Every conversation 
begins with these three questions. Number one, is your name really Amelia Earhart? Yes. Number two, are you a pilot? And let me tell you, when you say, no, not yet, people immediately go from to, hmm. And you only have to get that look a few times before you go, OK, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to be a pilot. Even if I don't like it, I'm going to get this done because they gave me this stupid name, right? <laughs> See, when I answered the phone that day, the researcher who had poured his heart into it and tried so hard to make sure that that connection was there, he looked in every corner. But he said, Amelia, I'm so sorry to tell you. But you share absolutely no common relation to the first Amelia Earhart. As you can imagine, the flight training really didn't seem joyful anymore. It felt like a waste of my time. It felt like an embarrassment. You go 31 years of your life thinking that you're one thing, and suddenly somebody drops on you that you're not who you thought you were. So of course, the embarrassment continues. My sponsors, all those 22 sponsors, are kind of going, oh, what are we going to do? I called up one of my mentors, and I said, I'm ready. I'm, I'm done. I'm just going to leave. And he said, I'm going to ask you a really dumb question. And I said, fine. <laughs> I've heard them all lately. He said, Amelia, when you were born, on that very day, did the FAA walk into the delivery room and hand that baby a pilot's license? I said, no, of course not. He said, that's right. You've done the exact same work that every other pilot at your level of training has done to get to this point. You've passed the check rides. You know, you've, you've done everything you can. And he reminded me of an incredible quote, that the world is changed by your example, not by your opinion. And that one really stuck with me. Without my parents, without a lot of the people who I thought were my friends, but a lot of people on my flight team that really believed in me, I called up every one of my sponsors. We're talking some Fortune 500 companies here, Honeywell Aerospace, Pilatus, GoPro, all these groups. And I'm so proud to stand in front of you to say that all 22 sponsors stayed on board. And that flight around the world did. Thank you. That flight around the world did absolutely happen. And this is where, of course, we get into the really good stuff. This image here is a 60,000 foot cloud top between Singapore and Darwin. We flew for nine hours and 45 minutes with 10 hours of fuel on board that plane. You know that feeling. <laughs> You're like, OK, what's going to happen here, right? You see a big storm like that pop up ahead of you. Our first reaction as humans when we see something piling up ahead of us that we're, we had no way want to address or, or work our way around, what do we want to do? We want to turn around 180 degrees and go back to the hangar. We want to say, you know what? Scrap it. Let's just, let's just start this one over tomorrow. But what I learned along this journey was the importance of course correction. 10 degree increments around a storm like this as you continue to fly at about 270 knots. The storm, what most people don't realize, is also changing as you course correct. Sometimes it's growing, sometimes it's dissipating, but the further you progress along, those small changes, they don't make as big or wide of a path as if you just go home and start over. These storms are always going to be here, but keep in mind, they're changing as well. Turbulence means it's time to course correct. We're not locked on train tracks. All of you in this room are community members, business leaders. You're all working together to make this an incredible place to live. If the path is laid out ahead of you and every step is just there, clear as day ahead of you, that's not the path that you're meant to be on. Course correct and change your path as you go. And of course, we know this living here in this portion of the US and especially in Denver as well. Turbulence occurs when we are crossing mountains, right? If you're going to make it up to the summit, you're going to feel those bumps. And as the media came rushing in, CNN and NBC and all the groups were there with their big cameras, after I hugged dad and mom and we had reconnected, they said, Amelia, Hang, you know, come over here. And, and Captain Tenorello said, Amelia, come over here for a second. And I marched over and I had that patch and I said, Sir, we made a deal. He said, That's right, we did. And he gives me this big hug, which is awkward because I'm 10 feet tall and he's this short little guy. <laughs> and he's holding me there just a little too long, right? Just a little bit awkward. <laughs> and I start to pull away and he looks at me with these blue eyes, just so piercing, and he says, 
I didn't tell you why I gave you this patch. And I said, go on. He said, when I was a little boy, I was obsessed with airplanes. Every time I would look overhead and a plane would come buzzing by, I would wonder where it was going, where it was coming from, who was piloting that plane, and how someday I could get up there myself. He said, Amelia, what I didn't tell you was that 77 years ago, I stood right here in this spot, and I watched the first Amelia Earhart depart on her flight around the world, and you just brought her back to me. And that, thank you. Mm. That is what the flight around the world is all about. The people that we impact just by going about our most passionate pursuits, the businesses we lead, the families we're a part of, the events we participate in, the good things that we do in the world, that is what makes an impact and helps other people live their most passionate and full lives. In the end, the most beautiful question that was asked about the flight actually came from my father. He said, honey, when you get back from this big trip that you're about to go on, I said, all right, that's one way of putting it, Dad. <laughs> he said, do you think the world will feel like a bigger or a smaller place? And I thought, well, Dad, that's a beautiful question. I said, it's going to take me a while to answer that, so I'll think about it. And now that the flight is done and I get to stand here and share my story with you, and I'm so grateful for that, I can tell you that, of course, the world is a much, much, much smaller place, but only if we choose to make it that way. And it is so much bigger in terms of the beauty and the potential that it holds for all of us. Thank you very much.